What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Cornelia, back for another episode of Black News, a podcast where we break down current events, hot topics, and local stories involving Black people. Now let's get into it. First things first. This is the last First Things First of 2022. This is the final episode of this year, guys. The last Black News Podcast episode for 2022. So overall, I just want to say thank y'all so much for riding with me, listening to this podcast weekly, chiming in on the on the topics, passing it along to friends and family. I appreciate it so much. It has been a very interesting year, um, but one thing that has remained the same is you guys is showing up and showing out for your girl. So thank you so much. Thank y'all. I, I just can't say it enough. Um, no more activities and shows for the rest of this year. So you can check my website. You can go to my social media all you want to. You ain't going to see nothing about no, uh, no activity. Okay. I am going to be relaxing. I am going to wrap up this year chilling out. I'm not going to be like, I got to do one final push to get, nope, I'm going to be laying down. And I suggest you do the same if that's what you want to do. But besides that, guys, thank you so much. 2023, I will be back after a two week break. So this is the last episode and I will be back that maybe that first or second week of January. So be on the look on the lookout for that. And if anything switches, and y'all see episode pop up. Y'all just see episode pop up. Okay. Y'all just see it pop up with that. I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday, a wonderful Christmas, Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy new year. And I'll see you guys back next time. But before I do that, we're going to get into some of these topics. So for the last time of 2022, let's get into it. How was y'all's 2022? How was y'all's year this year? Mine was, it was split. I ain't going to even hold you. I ain't even going to hold you. My 2022 was split. Not split like in like six months here, six months there. I had the first block of the year. How many months that was, was awful. And the second block was pretty darn good. And when I say it was awful, Maybe I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this on, on the podcast. If you know me in in my personal life, you probably have known this at the top of this year and the back end of last year, I was experiencing the worst pain I have ever experienced in my entire life. I was going through hell and back. I mean, literally it was the worst it, to the point, I think I was going to make it out of 2022. I'm, I'm dead serious. I did, if I did not think I was going to make it out because it was so bad for me. I don't, I see when people be dealing with and living with chronic pain for years, I don't see how that, I don't see how that's possible. Cause I literally did not see how I was going to make it through. Like not, not even joke. Think about and y'all experience the worst pain you've ever been in times that by 10 and make that all day, every day. It was, it was awful, but with prayer, yes. Um, you know, I won't even say my regular doctors, I started doing acupuncture that literally saved my life with the help of y'all. If it weren't for acupuncture, I would not be here. I'm not even, I'm, I'm so serious with that. So one half was awful. It was awful. I was still working and doing things, but and I wasn't, I was barely making it through the next half. Once I got my health under control and I started to feel better, I will tell you my life got back on track and I started to have a pretty good year. So, you know, it was just, it was just whatever. So overall this year, some of the highs, some of the good things, two of my closest friends got, got married. I was in their wedding, almost passed out at the wedding. Now I ain't tell y'all how I almost fainted as a bride, as a groomswoman and almost passed out and ruined the wedding. Okay. Your girl got lightheaded. 
I almost fainted mid ceremony. I'm talking about going, they doing the vows, they reading poems. I I had to, I had to sit down. It was, it was all, it was bad. It was bad, but it was a fantastic, it was a fantastic um, event and it ended up being extremely beautiful. Uh, also celebrated 20 years of being a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated across Gamma Iota chapter at Hampton University. Shout out to my HBCU. We had a reunion trip in Jamaica. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw highlights of all of this. The Jamaica trip was, was great. There were about 30 of us. I had a big line, but not net, not big, big, but it was big. But 30 of us, give or take a few, went to Jamaica and had a good time. Then I went to homecoming. Y'all know I, y'all know I was living at homecoming. Y'all know I, y'all know I was living at homecoming. And I went to Egypt. So activity wise, connecting, being with friends, it was it was a damn good time. Professionally, it was pretty good too. It wasn't um it wasn't one of my best years as of success. But I would say I maintained. I had the podcast going black news consistently throughout the year. Also uh had wrote and uh, was researching for a top rated comedy podcast on Spotify called Nosy Neighbors. If you had not listened, it is still up and available as a Spotify exclusive. Had a really good run with that fantastic year. And it was hosted by Chinadu Naka and Candace Thompson. Was pretty consistent with stand up, doing shows, uh, did some road work, it got better overall. I was accepted into the Laughing Skull Comedy Festival, so went to Atlanta and did that. Met a lot of good industry folks and some great comedy peers from other cities because that's while it, comedy festivals are designed for networking with industry, and I do air quotes industry because that's what they call people within the business that can hire you for things or help you get booked for things. A big part of that is making connections with other comics. So if you travel and go to other cities, you'll have an opportunity and you'll have help getting stage time. Also finished, completely finished one script. Script, I mean TV, um, 30 minute comedy. And I'm wrapping up another one. So I was good on that front. And I chilled out on acting a little bit. I don't have, I, I really don't have the desire that I used to, to be in front of the camera in an acting capacity like I once did. You just change over time and some of the things that you want, you don't want them no more. So career wise, it was pretty steady. Some, some good moments, but there was some shifting as well. Now with that, all of that, I just mentioned, what did I learn? This year, I really learned, one, I knew this, but I ain't know it, know it. Being healthy is the one of the most important and most valuable things you can have. Being healthy, it could literally change the trajectory of everything you do and you focused on. It affects your work. It affects your mood. It affects your faith. It affects your interactions with people. It affects you in um, their daily activities. It just affects literally every part. And when you ain't got good health, it can, it can set you up for downfall in every aspect of your life. I learned that one of my priorities here moving forward is I want to be healthy. Yeah, we always talk about getting to the money and getting the bag and this and that. You can have all that, but if your ass ain't if you sick you are not gonna be able to enjoy it i oh my y'all when i tell y'all i good health is so important and i think we all know that but like i said you know it but you don't really know it until it's time to learn that lesson so i learned that also learned that i you know, I, I had a milestone birthday this year and I thought because other people reacted, I won't say badly, but people react very interestingly to turning a big milestone age. I actually had the opposite. I feel really good. Like I feel, I know who I am. I know what I want. I know what I don't want. I know what I like and don't like. I know the type of people that I want to be around. I know the type of things that make me 
of that fulfill me. I know things that don't. I know the types of energies that I thrive around and I know the ones that I don't. I know what I ain't about to be doing. I know who I ain't going to be doing it with or who I will be doing it with. I feel like this is the year's work, year's worth of work that I've done to get me to this point and I feel really good. So overall in that aspect, fantastic, fantastic year. Um, now for goals, I don't really have like big 2023 goals yet. I haven't really said, I haven't really sat down and thought about what I want to get out of the year. Part of that is because in the past I've done that. I don't do vision boards and things. I do set goals, but I don't do vision boards because I have a hard time with myself. If I put something on there and I don't get it, it's just, just, it's disappointing for me, but uh, I, I big really go like a full list of goals. I ain't got them yet, but I do two things I want to do. I do want to get into two writing fellowships this year. Again, TV writing fellowships are a good opportunity to continue to learn and grow and network and make contacts in the industry. So I do want to uh, do, do that. And I also, again, want to focus on being mentally, physically, spiritually sound and healthy. That's a priority for me, a top priority. Uh, I do want to do more traveling. I traveled quite a bit this year. It's funny when I was very young and people would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would say I want to look cute and travel. And at the time I never knew what that meant. I just didn't know. And this was back in the 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 nineties. So that wasn't really a thing. Now people are literally getting paid to look cute and travel. So I might really look into this because when I was journeying around and trotting around this year, I was having the time of my life. And I really feel like I tapped into something that I should have been. Well, I won't say should have because I should I'm, I should have been doing what I was doing. I feel like I was tapping into something that I lost and found. So I want to do more traveling in 2023 and take another really big trip similar to when I went to Egypt because as we know your girl had a time in Egypt and I've got to get to Essence Festival this year this year I mean 2023 I every year I'll be talking about going to Essence and be mad why I ain't get to Essence and I'll be hitting up people the homies and to go to Essence I can't go I gotta I gotta I can't I gotta nope this year I'm going you either going or you're not Okay, you either rolling or you not, but I'm gonna be there. So those are some of the things that I want to do in 2023, look forward to doing and just the overall reflection of this past year in regards to y'all. How was it wrap up 2022? How was it on a scale of one to 10? How would you rank it? I would say all things being what they are and everything that I've been through this past year, I would give 2022, I would give it an 8.5 and I give it, I would have ranked it higher if the heavy, the heaviness of the top of the year didn't hold so much big weight. If I wasn't dealing with the health situation, I would have gave it a 10, but I'm going to do 8.5. I'm going to be honest. I'm being honest and I'm being realistic. 8.5 because the back end of this year and that trip to Egypt really raised the rankings. If I wouldn't have went to Egypt, you, I would have gave it a seven. Okay. I would have said seven. So how was y'all's year? Scale of one to 10, one to 10. How was y'all's 2022? And what are some of your goals for this upcoming new year? 2023 hit me up on social media and let me know. Now, another reason why this year ended so well for me was that damn Beyonce album and Club Renaissance, y'all. So y'all know I'm a member of the Beehive. I ain't crazy because I don't be online like attacking people and putting bees in the comment section, but I love me some Beyonce and this Renaissance album had me in the choke hold of life. You understand? Get the jaw, the jaws of life was, I had them. Okay. I had them. Maybe you all noticed there have been club renaissances popping up in different cities across the globe to celebrate the album and to have a space where you can actually listen to it from front to back. Because I've been going out like randomly 
little kick it parties, little lounges, celebrations or whatnot. And people, DJs might play one song. They'll play like, they'll play break my soul, but they'll be playing the full album like they need to. And it's disrespectful because it needs to be played from front to back. Beyonce knew that when she created it and put it out. So in Los Angeles, Parkwood, Beyonce and her team partnered with Amazon Music and they had a two night pop up event called Club Renaissance at a in like a warehouse downtown Los Angeles where you literally danced to the full album. They played it two times in a row and then had like Beyonce his plan afterwards. So I didn't know the setup of the event. I just randomly get a message from a colleague that was like, yo, look at this. It's a club renaissance coming up this weekend. I see the link. First come, first serve. Go to the link. Of course, everybody on the damn planet is trying to get tickets. Only one ticket to pee each. You can't get multiple tickets. It's just you. I couldn't get through the damn site. So I said, forget it. I ain't going. I, I tried my best. Sometimes stuff just ain't for you. And I accept that. So went about my business. I was like, you know what? That's fine. I, I can listen at home. There's going to be another opportunity for me. I have a good friend, Gary, who works at Amazon Music. Now, I hadn't talked to Gary about any of this. I, he probably know I'm a, a Beyonce Renaissance stand because he was he popped up surprised at, at my birthday party that my friends threw me. And it was a renaissance thing now, but he didn't know I was trying to get tickets. He didn't know I got booted out of the Beyonce renaissance site. He ain't know none of this. He randomly hit me up and was like, Hey, what's your email address? You got a ticket to go to club renaissance. When I tell y'all, I threw myself out of the bed and ran to the mall to get me a shirt. I cannot explain the level of excitement and i i've been wanting the excitement these past like months i've been wanting to have fun and a good time old canoe used to be outside you understand but lately i be chilling i don't really be out and i wanted to go to this and i was disappointed so that was the surprise okay then come to find out that my two good friends amila aj also had tickets to club renaissance so it wasn't like i was gonna be up in that bitch alone because i would have okay i would have buttoned up in that bitch by myself but then i had two friends to go with y'all so we get there early it's a line wrapped around the building because you know we got to be there early it ain't everybody ain't guaranteed to get inside okay so got there early finally got in there was a step and repeat with the renaissance pictures all up on the wall with beyonce as soon as you walk into the warehouse they had Renee, the horse, the sequins horse on display in a glass box. Y'all, why that horse so beautiful? I mean, like, it's so beautiful. And when she did the album cover, I don't know. I, I didn't really put together was she on a horse and then they did the CGI effect with, with the with the sequins on after the fact. But I, I believe she was probably on that one. And it was the size and shape of an actual horse but blinged the f out got all the footage she had merch on sale it was cute but it was hella expensive so i didn't get me no hoodie because the hoodies was going for about 150 i got it but i ain't really ain't got it so okay in there mixing and mingling it had cocktails and drinks there was finally the lights go out and then like a spotlight pops on and there was a voiceover Beyonce talking about making the album, her vision for it and, and wanting what she wanted to get out of it. And it was just like, a, I would say about a good, maybe five minutes of her talking. Now she wasn't there. It wasn't her like off in the corner somewhere. She wasn't there. But then once the VO stopped, the lights went out and then the album dropped. When I tell y'all, literally, imagine a one room where all of your fans, and not fake fans, real fans, who know the album front to back, word for word, all dressed up, sequins, lace, glasses, people from all backgrounds, different ages, Imagine everybody being in one spot to listen to the album that they love. When I tell y'all that energy was 
I ain't never been to like a concert or an activity where everybody was on the same page. Everybody was on the same page with this. And it was incredible. We danced, we sang, we drank. I had me some hard liquor, y'all. I was dropping it low. My kneecaps still at the venue. Okay, this was, when y'all listen to this, it's about a week ago. My kneecaps still on over there. Okay, they ain't came back. They over there on the floor at the in the warehouse. But it was, it was, oh, it was the best time. It was the best time. I'm talking about saying dance for hours straight, everybody. So it was that, that really topped off 2022 for me. Like everything was going good. And then that was just the icing on the cake. Shout out to Gary, man. Cause listen, if it wasn't for Gary, I would have been at home moping around, looking at Instagram, mad cause everybody else was there. But understanding that I tried and did my best, but he came through y'all. I highly recommend it. If there's a club renaissance in y'all's area, go. There have been some, I don't know if it was directly sponsored by or in partnership with Beyonce and her team. If it is, even if it ain't, I highly recommend it. Fantastic experience. Fantastic experience. Did y'all, did y'all have, the question is, did y'all have one in y'all's city? If so, did you go? If not, why not? And if it ain't one yet, you better be on standby because it, it's going to be the time in y'all life. Let me know what y'all thought about it. And are you still as crazy about Renaissance as I am? Hit me up on social media at Canelia with your thoughts. Now, a few random stories to keep our eyes on as we wrap up the year. And I'm only highlighting these. I'm not going too much into it because it's, one is too much. Okay. One first Megan the Stallion is still in court due to her being shot by Tory Lanez or as Tory Lanez's team is trying to put it, Kelsey. They have been in court for over a week now. And I'm saying that when I'm recording this podcast, they are still in court. By the time this podcast releases, they may not be because they need to wrap it up. But we have had witnesses and seen witnesses from the likes of detectives, uh, police officers, Megan was on the stand. Kelsey was on the stand. EJ, the stylist was on the stand. There is a neighbor that has been called so many different people. The bodyguard, Megan's former bodyguard went missing. They can't find him. It's y'all it's, this is the craziest trial ever, but all of this to determine who was it that shot Megan the stallion? Because, you know, social, if you go by social media, we try to act like people's characters on trial and people keep saying Megan lying about having sex with Tory Lanez. That's not what's on trial. Sex life is not on trial. What's on trial is who shot someone. You can't shoot people. Okay. You cannot shoot people. So whoever, it don't matter who, who doing who, if you shoot somebody, that's what's going to be on trial. So keep our eye on that. Who knows what's going to happen. I'm standing with Megan because like I said on last week's episode, I, I support black women. Okay. I support them. Black women and, and black girls. Also to keep our eye on, apparently Lil Romeo is fed up with his daddy Master P. It sparked when DJ Twitch died of suicide last week or when this releases two weeks ago. Very tragic. Rest in peace to DJ Twitch. Definitely unexpected and surprising and devastating because as y'all know, depression and heartbreak and struggle does not have a face. It don't look like anything in particular. He was so happy. We know that two things can be true at one time. Someone can appear to be fine and on the inside they are not. So I I definitely want to send love to his family because that's tragic. Um, And with, so in regards to Master P and Lil Romeo, Master P posted saying, giving his condolences and talking about depression and suicide. And that triggered Lil Romeo because apparently it seems like Master P is not as supportive in his personal life when in regards to his children and family members dealing with depression, mental illness, and suicide. 
but Romeo says something to the effect of we really don't know who he is and he ain't that who who we who we think he is he ain't that then it dominoed into them not getting no money for all the work that they've been doing Master P not on on a rap snacks y'all it's it's getting out of control okay it's getting out of control so keeping our eye on both of those as far as any future developments but again I'm not getting too much into it on this one because we celebrate in 2022 okay this the new year coming up and we gonna end on a positive note so if there are any other stories worth talking about when I'm back in a few weeks I'll put those in the docket but outside of that you know that's pretty much it for uh, what's going on as of right now do you have any updates or other news about these two stories Meg, Meg versus Tori and Master P versus Lil Romeo if so hit my inbox let me know what you found or what you know uh, at Canelia on social media All right, to recap this week's episode, we did a recap of 2022. Some of the highs, the lows, the lessons we've learned, and the overall expectation and hope for 2023. Next, I have to tell y'all about Club Renaissance, Beyonce's pop-up party that was in downtown Los Angeles. It was the freaking time of my life. And if it was in y'all area or if it's coming, you need to be there. And then we did a quick update on where we are in regards to Meg versus Tori and Master P versus Lil Romeo. Besides that, guys, it has been a wonderful 2022. I hope you guys have a happy and safe holiday season. Many blessings to you all and your family, friends and loved ones. And with that, y'all, I will see y'all back next time in 2023. That's it for this week's episode of Black News, y'all. Thanks again. Thank you. And thank you again so much for sticking with us, supporting the podcast, liking and subscribing on all apps where podcasts can be heard, rating five stars and leaving a comment. It helps more than you know. So I really, really appreciate it. And keep sharing Black News with all of your friends and family. Be sure to hit me up on social media if you got ideas for topics. Or just hit me up in general to let me know you've been listening. Let me know your thoughts. I'm at Canelia on all platforms across the board. That's at Canelia like Kenny and Ophelia. Also check my website. I got some shows coming up in Los Angeles County. Hopefully get on the road soon. But for now, if you're in the LA area, hit me up. Check Canelia.com for show dates and details. And as always... Thanks again so much, guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. Keep supporting, keep growing, keep building, keep staying safe, and keep staying healthy. As always, again, I'll see you back here next time, same time, same place. Bye.